Hello everyone and welcome to today's Steris Tech Talk on an overview of irradiation's effects on cannabis processing. Steris Tech Talks are a series of webinars covering subjects relating to gas and radiation sterilization processing and the laboratory testing and validation services which support these processes. My name is Zach Nutting and I'm the Associate Product Manager for Steris Applied Sterilization Technologies. Our presenter today is Betty Howard. Betty Howard is the Senior Radiation Sterilization Manager in Steris AST with many years industry experience in sterilization and microbiological testing of healthcare products, technical support, and standards development. Previous roles include positions in microbiological testing, analytical instrumentation, marketing, and pharmaceutical assay development. And now over to Betty to begin the presentation. Thank you all for attending our webinar today. Uh, as Zach pointed out, we're gonna talk about the effects of radiation on cannabis processing and some of the benefits of it as well. Uh, our agenda is going to be very directed at cannabis. We're gonna talk briefly about some of the history of cannabis and why it's of such interest in healthcare and for many global applications, why we should be interested in using cannabis with an irradiation process, and specifically why we're doing this. There are known health risk things that have to be managed as part of you, all the many uses now of cannabis. I wanna go through the benefits of irradiation, and then I wanna focus some more on specifically E-beam and its impact on cannabis. Um, as, as Zach pointed out, I've been in Steris for over 20 years, and all of the things that we're talking about today cover the growth of what can be done with radiation processes. Um, to start, look at some background on cannabis. Cannabis has a very long history of use in medical, therapeutic type applications, also uses for recreational purposes due to the psychoactive effects, but we sometimes forget there's also a great, very large industry applications of use for hemp, the fibers used in textiles, for building materials, making plastics, lubricants, even the hemp seeds are used frequently as a nutritional source. Current research in cannabis is focused on the effects of hundreds of bioactive cannabinoids and additional compounds such as terpenes, flavonoids, and the alkaloid metabolites that are in cannabis to assure consumer safety and use and the potential beneficial effects are maintained. Many of the known cannabis, cannabinoids sorry, have or could be used and are being researched in the treatment of glaucoma, uh, chronic musculoskeletal pain, different kinds of spasms, nausea, multiple sclerosis, cognition impacts, etc. Every day, more and more research funds are going into what we've just probably touched the surface on of just what we can derive from a cannabis plant. Um, always remember that cannabis is an agricultural product. It grows naturally, including so cannabis to us for what we're gonna talk about today will include not just the leaves, but also the seeds and the entire plant when it's growing can be exposed to contamination in the form of fungal, fungal infections, bacteria, yeast, mold during the growing process. But the possible implications in terms of contamination are not just from the growing process. The handling of it after it's grown, drying it, packaging it, and the delivery mechanisms used for it, all of these can potentially pose health risks for consumers. Some of the major things that have been reported are health risks related to pulmonary disease, salmonella contamination, and even on occasions, botulinum. When we talk about ionizing radiation uh, traditionally, we're talking about radiation such as gamma or ebeam that have been used and documented as safe methods for the sterilization of healthcare products and of consumer products worldwide for over 50 years. But let's look a little further into what your options are. You have a product with great benefits to, the, to all kinds of consumers. And if you're trying to mitigate some of that risk 
of some of those pathogens that might be in it as a result of getting it to that end user, you do have options you can consider how to affect it. You could use heat, things like dry heat, autoclaving it. Let's consider what that effect might be. There are known effects, negative effects, on some of the active molecules in cannabis as a result of heat. Um, you also are thinking ahead usually of trying to control the heat even in transportation of the product alone because it's a known effect on the compounds in it. There are chemical ways to reduce contamination, particularly microbiological, different gases, liquids like ethylene oxide, other alternative gas technologies, formaldehyde and liquid um, disinfectants. The problem with these things is they do leave residuals. So you may be re removing one bad thing, the, mac the microbiological effect, but adding a second consideration on trying to get rid of the residuals. Microfiltration for liquids only, um, small pore size filters. If you run a liquid through them, you will usually pull out most of the bacterial contamination. But unfortunately, the things that are dissolved in the liquid might also stay behind. So you might lose some of the desired compounds from the product if you go just with filtration. Non-ionizing radiation, so no radioactivity involved either, uh, such as UV light, the one big problem with it is it's more a surface treatment. It lacks the penetration to go through a whole tote or carrier or box of product. The ones we're gonna focus on today are gonna be the ionizing radiations. E-beam, X-ray, and gamma are all considered ionizing, but the ones we're gonna look at today most directly will be E-beam and gamma. The reason why we like these, or why you should like these, is that ionizing radiation processes have the ability to penetrate very deeply through a product. They do not add any heat, the exposures to the system are very short, and they leave no residual behind. So they're not adding something that will stay on your product in order to make it sterile, or mainly in our case, to reduce the level of healthcare risk. With increasing global awareness of the health risks potentially from cannabis, the requirements are starting to come out or to be seen to set limits of the microbiological contamination and to try to control that during the growth process or in the handling process. Growing large quantities of cannabis or any ag product in sterile condition is near impossible. And if you tried with cannabis and people have tried, it could affect the quality of the end product. Naturally grown agricultural materials would be expected to have a wide variety of contamination levels based on where they were grown, how they were handled. And natural products such as that are very difficult to try to create a single dose range or a single condition that would give the exact same result every time. So we're not talking about a terminal sterilization we're talking at a reduction of the risk in the product. Extreme tr treatments, you could always use more and more of some of these types of treatments that would reduce the contamination. But as you increase it, you may be trying to, or maybe damaging the ability to mitigate the benefit from the risk dropping without creating more damage to the product in chemistry or even appearance. Reducing contamination levels to, so, to safe levels is achievable, and the general concerns are addressed by the controls of the process and the terminal sterilization or the terminal irradiation process, sorry. Um, but what are the overall benefits of radiation for the cannabis industry? One, deep penetration into the product and its packaging. So the way you would send it to us, for example, in a box or a tote, these systems can easily penetrate through that and be able to provide the benefit you need to reduce the risk for healthcare concerns. It has little or no effect on temperature. It can reduce post-harvesting losses of product by suppressing sprouting or allowing microbiological contamination to continue to grow. It can control pests. It can reduce foodborne disease in edibles and inhaled products. By reducing the contamination, which you're preventing it from growing forward and making more problems, you can also extend the shelf life of the product. And most importantly, it leaves no residual chemical or radioactivity on the product. So one of the first questions people who are not familiar with radiations 
treatments is they want to know if their product will become radioactive by using gamma or eating. And the answer is an unconditional no. The ionizing radiation commonly used to treat cannabis, electron beam, or gamma cannot make a product radioactive. The radioactivity in a gamma source is securely contained in the irradiator, and the radioactivity cannot be touched or deposited on the product at any point. All that will go through a product in even a gamma radiator is that the energy from the radioactive material in the form of photons, no mass, no charge, that is what will be used to kill microorganisms in your product. There will be no residual radioactivity or risk from radioactivity that can harm a consumer or user of a cannabis irradiated product. An electron beam process is still an ionizing radiation process, but now the energy used to sterilize or decontaminate a product is generated from electricity to produce electrons that are being accelerated very, very rapidly and are then focused into your product. No radioactivity is used to make or to use electron beam. So why do we want to use electron beam? E-beam irradiation delivers the required, has the ability to deliver the required dose very quickly. We usually refer to dose in a unit called kilograys. In the case of E-beam, those kilograys are delivered in a rate of kilograys per second. The shorter the exposure to any ionizing radiation source, the less potential you have to modify the materials. In the case of cannabis, all those um, cannabinoids and other beneficial molecules in there are going to have less chance to be modified if they're in a very rapid process. Cannabis, sorry, cannabis has low density when it's pr presented to us in the form of totes or boxes. And when uniformly delivered in those totes, it can easily be penetrated and the pro through the product and the packaging in the format in which it is delivered to us for processing. It's commonly, when it's commonly used, the doses required or targeted are very low, so low numbers of kilograys. The lower the number of kilograys requested, the shorter that processing time will be. Low dose reduction, low doses reduce the potential effects on the active components or the moisture content of the product while delivering the needed reduction in healthcare risks for all forms of use. Both gamma and E-beam are well documented as effective, but radiation with E-beam can deliver a comparable dose in seconds versus the hours to deliver the same amount of dose in gamma. Shorter processing time reduces oxidation. Oxidation is the frequent cause of chemical change to some of those the compounds in any material, including cannabis. Um, and less time in the ionizing field reduces the potential options to cause those chemical changes. Also, we want to note that the moisture content can be lost more from the paper packaging that something may be in or transportation rather than the actual processing time in the radiation system. Um, with eBeam, we know that there are many publications and high level peer review studies that are still ongoing that are showing the levels of cannabinoids, terpenes, and the moisture content do not change significantly. Irradiation does not cause changes in the content of the THCs or CBDs, generally considered to be the most therapeutically active compounds in, the med in medical cannabis, especially. Studies of limited varieties had some reduction in the effects of terpenes, but qualitatively remain with the same profile of the terpenes that were in there before and after. The most volatile terpenes, the monoterpenes, show a slight loss, but they also will show that slight loss even on storage. So there's the reason we know it's just from a volatility is that we don't see degradation products of the terpenes within the product post irradiation. There are different varietals out there of naturally grown cannabis that can have different amounts of actives, and they can also vary per process or per harvest of a lot. So we know there is going to be variation, but that's okay. We're trying to reduce the risk 
we're not trying to make everything have the exact level of activity when it's done. Um, radiation allows for a safe product, yet does not lose what is referred to as the entourage effect, which is the role of all of the actives in cannabis, many of which we still do not know the full use of today. And also versus trying to synthetically create an individual, for example, cannabinoid and purifying it. Radi the radiation impact on cannabis enhances safety for workers in this industry as well, or the users from any of the known hazardous organisms that could be commonly found in the environment that affect recreational or medical cannabis. So far, alternative expression systems where one has tried to purify and synthetically make, for example, different individual CBDs cannot produce the quantities needed at the costs invest versus the cost invested to make enough to be as beneficial as the naturally grown material. Furthermore, many of the actives still have not been fully characterized and the benefits of the full profile of activities can be lost. There are many publications that have already shown what can be done and many of the chemical studies of the cannabinoids are already available for you. The ones I've listed here in the references are where most of the information here came from and they're all readily available online as public access access documents. There are many of them, but this is just the beginning. We have to always remember right now, there are a lot of um, investments being made from the healthcare industry and from other industries to truly understand the benefits of using a cannabis plant on different specific purposes and medical needs as well. Um, for more information on the radiation processes and some of the benefits of what Steris can bring to your industry, we give you the, uh, question, the ability to reach us through our website. Thank you for attending our webinar. Thank you again for joining us today. This concludes the presentation. <laughs>